Hi everyone, this is your chemistry teacher, Ms. Plasetka. I want to go through some examples with you today on how we can predict the products of a chemical equation. Um, so what the first example we're going to look, like, look at is, is I have a mixture um, of potassium iodide and lead 2 nitrate. And I want to first of all predict what the products are going to be and then write out the balanced chemical equation. So I'm going to start off um, with just writing what these two compounds are going to look like. Um, so potassium has the symbol K and it has a charge of plus 1. Um, iodine has a symbol I and a charge of minus 1. Um, putting those two together and crisscrossing my charges, that gives me the chemical compound Ki. Similarly for lead 2 nitrate, um, lead has the symbol Pb. Because it's lead 2, it has a charge of plus 2. If I look up nitrate on my common ion sheet, I'm going to find it has the formula NO3 um, and a charge of minus 1. So crisscrossing there, um, I'm going to get lead because nitrate has a, a minus 1. I only need one lead. And then with my NO3, from the lead charge of plus 2, I know that I need then two groups of the NO3. So in my chemical reaction, what I have is I have potassium iodide combining then with lead nitrate. Now I need to predict, predict um, what my products are going to look like. Um, I can see from this, because I have a compound on the left hand side that's combining with a second compound um, on that side, that I'm going to have a double displacement reaction. And what's going to happen is that my positive ion from one compound has to combine with a negative ion from the other compound. So looking at this first one, um, what's going to happen is I can see that my, my potassium is my positive on this side, um, and my nitrate is my negative on this one. And I guess it's not a negative one, but it's my it's my negative compound over here. So when I'm looking at what that product is going to look like, um, I'm going to have potassium nitrate. So I'm getting potassium. We said potassium has a charge of plus one. Um, nitrate has a charge of minus one. So my, my compound over here is going to be KNO3. Um, now taking a look at the other ones, um, I need to look now at my positive ion from my second compound. It has to combine with my negative ion from my first compound. So I'm looking at my lead and my iodide combining. I always want to write um, my positive ion first, so I'm going to write my lead. And then my iodide gets written second. Um, looking at my charges here, my charge of my lead is plus 2. So that tells me I need two iodides. Um, and then looking at my iodide, it has a charge of minus one, so I just need one lead. So that is good there. Um, my very last step is to go through this chemical equation to make sure it's balanced. Um, right away when I'm looking at it, I can see that I have two groups of the NO3 on the left, and I only have one on the right. Um, so I'm going to put a two in front of there to balance that. Um, that now gives me two potassiums on the right-hand side, so I also need to have two potassiums on the left. Um, iodide is now balanced two and two, um, and and lead stays at one and one. So um, everything is good to go with this question. The second example that I want to take a look at um, is what happens when I have aluminum um, being added to hydrochloric acid. Okay, so let's start out um, again with writing out what those chemical formulas are going to look like. Uh, aluminum, charge of plus 3 off my periodic table. Um, hydrochloric acid is going to be the combination of hydrogen, which has a charge of plus 1, and chlorine, which has a charge of minus 1. Um, so that gives me the formula HCl. Writing it in the chemical equation um, is going to be aluminum, plus my hydrochloric acid. Notice my aluminum, I don't write it with the charge in the chemical equation um, because it's occurring in its neutral state. Um, I now want to predict what the products are going to be here. Um, I can see with this question that I have a compound on the left hand side um, and I just have a single element on um, combining with it. 
So what, what's going to happen here is it's going to be a single displacement, um, and I need to find out if aluminum is able to displace hydrogen um, to form a compound with the chlorine. So before I can, I can go any farther, I need to take a look at my activity series chart. So I'll just pull that up. And what this tells me is if an element is strong enough to displace another one um, in a single displacement reaction. So I can see here, um, aluminum is found above hydrogen on the chart, which means that it's a little bit stronger in terms of forming compounds, and it's able to displace that hydrogen um, when it reacts with it. Okay, if my aluminum was below my hydrogen, um, I would have no reaction proceeding. So when, let's go back up to that question. Oh, and I don't think that's it. Here we go. Um, I know this reaction will proceed. Um, so what I'm going to have now is my aluminum combines with my chlorine. Um, aluminum gets written first because it's the positive one. Chlorine gets written second. Um, aluminum has a charge of plus three, so that tells me I need three chlorines. Chlorine, again, charge of minus one, so just one aluminum. Um, and that leaves my hydrogen left over afterwards. Um, hydrogen is a diatomic element, so it's always written in pairs. Last step is to balance this up. Um, taking a look, first thing I can see um, is that I have, I have three chlorines on this side, so I'm going to put three chlorines over here. Now that gives me three hydrogens over here and, and two hydrogens on the right. Um, now even if I you know, bump this up to a two, that now gives me four hydrogens. So because, because this always has to occur in pairs, um, that makes it a little bit trickier to balance um, because I can't get it to equal a three. So I'm going to look to try and make an even number of hydrogens over here. Um, and I can see that if I increase this one to six chlorines, um, and I make this one into six chlorines, that allows me to have an even number of hydrogens that I can account for on the right. So having six hydrogens here, that tells me I need a three to make six hydrogens on the left, or on the right. Um, my chlorines, again, they're balanced at six and six. Um, and my aluminums then is my last step. I have two aluminums on the right, so I also need to have two aluminums on the left. Um, this chemical equation is now balanced, so I am finished. Uh, thanks for watching this video, and I hope it helped you.